teacups, what's brewing and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we have two reacts to do, um, the making cauliflower crust pizza and the Italian poutine. Uh, I was planning on just doing it to this one but then because Chantel does not think about how frequently she uploads and how to space uploads correctly and give everything a chance to get views, <laughs> we got two pieces of content very close together. I think she is still kind of in panic mode about the money and she just like any time she eats anything she can just go okay this is good enough to be an upload. Now Chantel is still in Canada which is kind of unsurprising. Um, we'll talk a little bit about her therapy and the appointments she had and stuff like that later. Uh, but airspace was briefly closed on her route for uh, Kuwait at the very least, but I wasn't expecting her to go back right away. I don't think she's going to have the money to do it until payday at the very least, so we've probably got another week on this. But always happy to be proven wrong, if Chantelle ever cares to. So with that in mind, let's get into this. Good morning, welcome back to another vlog. So today I have an early appointment, so I thought I would grab some breakfast at Tim Hortons, so I'm gonna grab a everything bagel with cream cheese and some OJ. Tim Hortons has really good OJs. I am surprised she is willing to go for cream cheese. <laughs> I am and I'm not, given the uh, poorness at which she tolerated it over her journey home. You'd think she'd be more concerned about that, but apparently not. <laughs> also, how does everyone feel about orange juice? Like, I know it's really popular, but I always find it really hard on my stomach, like it just burns a hole in it. It's the one juice I don't really like going to. I prefer apple, it's a bit softer. So, I find orange juice usually gives me heartburn, but the one at Tim Hortons usually doesn't hurt my stomach at all. I'm not sure if that's slight side eye at Tim Hortons juice. <laughs> like, real juice hurts, but this doesn't. <laughs> in Canada, there's like a Tim's at every corner, I swear. I won't complain about the gas prices. I think I've done that enough and I'm done complaining, but they are very high. I know we're all feeling the same pain. Apparently she's not done complaining, but I would say there is a big difference between gas prices here and gas prices everywhere else. It's incredibly cheap here comparatively. So yeah, I get it. So I just put some gas into my car and I'm ready to head to my appointment. It was pretty cold and rainy today. Uh... Please stop the wine, please. You don't have anything to whine about and you are a grown woman. Oh. <laughs> I love that she's trying to do the like, the pull, the, the influence pull of look how delicious this is and it's just sort of dissolving in her hands. I don't think she could have made that look less appetizing if she had actually tried. Oh, I take it back. <laughs> now I don't think she could. She's biting into that like it's ambrosia, like my dude. It's a, it's a chain bagel with cream cheese. Diabetes. That's gonna be a running theme here, but like, I've had some bread and orange juice, it'll be great for me. Now, I know I'm not like a health or fitness guru by any I means, know and I could be doing a lot better, but I just enjoy, you know, the nature and going for a walk here and there. I don't know where she is here, but I wouldn't mind walking down that road. I'm not sure if that's a driving path or a footpath. I would think a footpath, but uh, yeah, I'd be up for an early spring stroll. I imagine she didn't enjoy it. Nothing special. Hey guys, so we're out here. Just going for a walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's kind of rainy. Look at her face, but she doesn't use skin smoothing. Definitely not. I Seriously, she's been walking, she's got the hood up so her face is going to be warm and moving so her face is going to be warm. And you think her skin really looks like that? No, no. Blew me out, but it's like sprinkling so it's alright. I kind of miss this weather though, where it's like very slight dampness in the air. We've got a little bit of it right now, like I didn't go to school today because of the uh, flash flooding that have been in areas around. Uh, did I say this in the intro? Maybe I forgot to. 
So we've had a lot of rain. It's been a really interesting year for it. I've had teachers being like, I've never seen this before. Because last year when I was here, we had no rain days at all. But it's kind of grey outside, but we've still got the warmth, which I don't love because it just gets more humid because there's more water in the air. But uh, classes got cancelled today. It rained yesterday and uh, there was flooding in the governance kind of around us. And then it rained again today. But because there had to be rescue operations in certain places yesterday, I think some people got stranded in a school and they had to evacuate like a thousand. And I was looking at some of the pictures online and it was just showing cars floating away in the um, car park, which looked terrifying. Because that's the problem with sudden heavy rains, it's that they don't have the drainage system for it and it floods so quickly. So by the time the parents manage to get here to pick them up, it can be dangerous. But they've preemptively cancelled tomorrow as well. So I've got like a mini weekend right now, which is kind of long winded and you didn't really need to know. But I, I miss this where it's not freezing to death cold of the winter, but it, it's not sunny yet. You can just enjoy it. Looks like a haunted forest or something, I don't know. Huh. Sorry for the waddling motion sickness. I was gonna ask, I wonder why she's never gotten herself a gimbal, but I suppose she doesn't really do this content enough for it to be a worthwhile purchase, but it would help her, I think. All right, I walked for about 15 minutes. Now I'm just gonna head back. <sighs> this is the lady that said she could walk for hours. Although I suppose she did take to her bed right after that, so she couldn't. But it's something to behold, going from 15 minutes out of breath to, to uh, oh no, I could walk for hours just a few months ago. That being said, because I feel I'm being overly negative here, like, I am glad she's walking. I think she needs it. And I think she probably knows she needs it and thinks that it will balance out everything else she does in these two videos, which it won't, but it's a good habit to start. Notice no complaints about the sciatica though. Interesting. Oh, we can just see Wait, the road. It was palm the trees. Here it's pine trees or balsam trees. <laughs> you guys check out this quote from today's Health and fitness, walk 30 minutes. Okay, she's done half of that. Bagel, cream cheese, orange juice. After dinner, some rice cakes. Ah. Oh no, I'm sorry. A few dill rice cakes. I was about to say, but where's dinner though? Is she seriously using a to-do planner for this? Appointments, HR at 8.45 a.m. Ottawa. Someone tagged me with that on um, Twitter and said that apparently on the farms, they're saying it could be the housing what's it called, the housing department, the people who help you with um, getting housing if you can't afford it. We call it social housing in the UK. I, it begins with H, housing something. I looked into the requirements really quick just in case. Uh, it would be about four and a half thousand dollars a month would be her max she'd be allowed to make. And there's like a five plus year waiting list. So it would not be a quick fix. The other suggestions of what it might be included, there's a... Uh, a group, is it HR Block? I can't remember. But the group that help you with your taxes, which would be a sensible thing for her to do right now. It's tip to say she's done it either way, so I suppose we'll find out. Given that she's already admitted that she was tourist hopping at the very least at the beginning of her journey, even though she's adamant she's still not doing it, which obviously I don't believe, she does owe taxes in Canada and she would even if she were a real resident. So it makes sense for her to go in and even if it's just a case of here are my books let me throw myself on your mercy just getting something in place very often a change of self is needed more than a change of scene ac benson i love that she's putting take a hint foodie beauty lol onto the onto the screen but not taking the hint yes that would be really good advice to follow but as ever foodie doesn't follow good advice <laughs> Isn't that true? Yes, it is. So since I started using a planner, like actually using it. <laughs> the one day. <laughs> I find that it really helps my anxiety um, for some reason. I don't know, but... I... If I felt that her anxiety was anything other than A, self-inflicted and B, a useful prop when she needs it, 
I would say that I would imagine a planner would put into more concrete form the things you were meant to do. And therefore that takes away a lot of the uncertainty of choice because it's already been made and it can help to calm you down a little bit because you know what's coming, hence plan. But it's not like she hasn't had this realization before and then she's still just stopped using it. I find it like comforting. I have a little evening routine where I like, you know, just wind down, getting PJs, comfy PJs that I got from Pennington's. <laughs> And uh, I don't think I showed you guys those yet on my pajama set. I'll have to do that. And Maybe you could put a video schedule in your handy dandy planner. Anyways, um... It's not something you're gonna do. <laughs> and then I just plan for like, whenever, the next day, some more things I think of for the week, you know? Um, yeah, I'm trying to make the most out of this visit and get enough things done. So, yeah. And quick health update. You know, alhamdulillah that I think I'm completely rid of this flu virus. It's not a flu that stays very long. It's like only a few days. So, yeah. I don't know what was really wrong with her. I'm betting what she was describing were the side effects of it regardless. But the more people have been discussing that hospital video, the more they're like, if she had been, if she had been evacuating her body, as badly as she was, she would not have been in the kind of state where she could have spoken to us the way she did. She's got so many health concerns, she really could have been there for anything, but um, it's good to see that the realization she had in the hospital. I'm definitely not putting any crap in my body after this, uh, the way I feel. I don't think I can tolerate it, honestly. They want me to try to tolerate something has definitely been stuck to just mere days later. But I feel 100% better and yeah, I'm feeling good. So can't complain. But yeah, so actually I have a um, pizza date with my aunt. Pizza, perfect. Now she does say it's cauliflower crust pizza, which I suppose better than bread, but if you're going to start the day with a bagel, a white bagel, and some orange juice. I don't see what the point of that is. Uh, for lunch, and we are going to get together and make cauliflower crust pizzas. Don't remember what cauliflower crust tastes like or if I've ever had it. I'm not sure. I feel like she tried at one point during one of her health kicks, but it's it's been a while. And she has taken off most of her videos, so how would we know now? But there's going to be pineapple on it, but I'm actually kind of craving that. I like pineapple on pizza. I don't care what you say. Oh, I don't mind. Sometimes I crave it. I know. I also like sweet corn on pizza. Feel free to be disgusted by that. It's very common in Britain. Oh, I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that. Whatever. <laughs> All right, Yella. Well, this is just about the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. Pretty close, anyway. There are Canadian geese that are nesting because it is nesting season and they are choosing interesting places this year to nest. I'm not going to make you listen to this whole story because that's all you really need. But basically, she thinks it's adorable that they're nesting in these odd places. I think it's a little sad that they're nesting literally next to trash because humanity has taken over their spaces. I'm not a massive, like, gung-ho environmental campaigner, but to me, that's the first thought that comes when I see this. All right, and here are the small pizzas. Look what she's done to that pizza. Like, why? You can see this cheese underneath, which would at least make it look like if it were on top a little more appetizing. Look at the aunt's pizza. Look how normal it looks. <laughs> like, I get pineapple on pizza, I don't have a problem. I get mushroom. I don't like olives. I don't like olives on pizza or otherwise. But they're just like whole and a half olives. They're not sliced or anything. It's going to be really salty. Uh, it doesn't look appetizing, which is a little sad because obviously it's capable of looking appetizing because her aunt does. Ready to eat look, with the uh, cauliflower crust. They look so good. You guys, the crusts are from Farm Boy, by the way. They're pre-made. They're gluten-free and they are delicious. Like, they have a bite and a flavor to them. It's so good. I would eat this again. And a few hours later, for like an evening snack, we have some lime tortilla chips and... That salsa actually looks delicious. She says it's garden fresh. I don't know if she means that's the brand 
or if they actually made it at home, but it looks good. Some garden fresh salsa. All right, guys. So for visuals for this segment of the video, I decided to use a variety of clips. Okay, she's doing this because A, she's got a ton of clips that she can just pop in and it's no effort for her. But B, then she doesn't have to face the camera while spewing the amount of crap she's about to spew. I think she's just prepared it on a paper. You can tell she's reading off something, which is fair. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to jab at her for having a script or anything, because sometimes, frankly, she needs it. But we don't need footage from a year ago. She could have easily gotten some B-roll from Canada, which still wouldn't be massively interesting, but at least it would be recent. But she really just wants to make a point here, which is which why we're here. But I want to talk about wanting to go home. One thing I've been really struggling with the past few times I've come and gone back and forth between Canada and the Middle East is the inability to express my feelings regarding the reasons the trips have been happening. And she doesn't need to explain herself there because we know she's had to make the trips because of a tourist visa. And that's what this comes down to. It seems like the only thing she's been using that to-do planner for is to think up excuses as to why it's definitely not that. So that is the simple explanation for everything she's about to tell us. And she seems to think that if she shows how torn she is between the two, it'll be more believable that she's going back and forth like this. I do believe that she's been impulsive in flying back because she makes her decision quite suddenly and she obviously was not financially prepared the first time. But having done it the first time, you think she'd be more aware of what the problems were going to be the second. Because she doesn't need to be in Canada to get out of Kuwait to be able to fulfill the requirements of um, applying for a visa. A tourist visa, I mean here. So she could have done this very easily from a nearby country where the hotels were not expensive. And she could have done it for less than the price of a ticket. But she also needs some kind of storyline for her... Um, for her channel and oh i'm torn between two worlds is as close to a legitimate storyline as she can make it unfortunately because all her other lies always come back to haunt her we know that it's just a front so i decided to try and organize my thoughts a bit and here's what i came up with came up with i can absolutely bet she came up with this Number one, of course, there is the obvious. I am chronically impulsive. And yes, it is very annoying. Besides that, imagine you are who you are and a big part of you was shaped by the culture and society you were brought up in. Everyone is shaped by the culture and society they grew up with, which is why people tend to put more thought into giving it up in the first place. Now imagine that unexpectedly you fall in love and get married and spend a great amount of time integrating yourself in your new significant other's culture. Okay, so who are you talking about here? Because you're not married and you have spent no time integrating yourself into the culture. You've attempted to integrate yourself into the religion by putting on the hijab, but you haven't integrated yourself in any other way and you can probably count on one hand how many times you've been out of the apartment alone. How you can probably count on one finger how many times you've been out of the apartment alone. So who exactly is integrating themselves to the point where they feel they can't live in their home culture anymore? And that culture deeply embraces the religion you now follow. So you start- Follow is a strong word. Start to feel like this is your home. But there are always things about your first home that you miss, and probably always will. It's like a tug of war. It all comes down to both countries have pros and cons. Yes, that is expat life. Which is why sometimes people do visit and they do get the things they miss. But it's not the reason you're doing it. The things that Foodie misses are the food. And she's as much as said that. When she's come back, she was like, oh yeah, most of the reason for coming back is the food. Or the other habits that she can't follow in Kuwait, which are also 
incredibly detrimental to her because she's literally said she's been high since coming back from Canada. Um, she can't resist her old habits since coming back. So on one hand, she wants all the food and she immediately gave up the idea of being halal or what have you the moment she stepped into Canada. So don't sit there and tell me the religion impacts your life any more than being able to cover your hair. I think when she says the culture is easier, she means that she can order takeout, know it's halal without thinking about it and not get backlash for it. I think that's as far as that thought goes. I think in addition to that, there are certain things that are a lot cheaper here and just easier for her. Even if she's there as a tourist, she's not going to need a credit check to get into an apartment. Her rent's going to be slightly cheaper. She's got salar to share costs with. Gas is cheaper and utilities are cheaper. So in terms of the practical things that impact her, Kuwait is a better deal. And she gets to say to the internet, look at my husband, even though he cheats on her. My husband, my cat, my hamster are my immediate family now, and I miss them in our seaside apartment. I miss the Middle East. Could she be any more wooden reading off this script? Sorry, I know I said I wasn't going to rag on her from it, but a little bit of feeling, darling. And culture. I know the heat in the summer is bad, but I will bear it. We will deal with obstacles as they come, and we will do it together. I miss hearing the call to prayer. How do you deal with obstacles? Sorry, it was a bit late then because I got a message on my phone. Um, how do you deal with the obstacles of your marriage when Salah is the obstacle in your marriage? I don't see you overcoming that, really. You know, I never realized before how difficult it is to understand someone's life or decisions without being them. Okay, so what you're actually saying there is we don't understand your life or your decisions because we haven't been there. I am an expat. I have been an expat on and off since... God, I had my first international job in Disney in the early 2000s, and I had lived in Sweden to study before that. So we're talking a solid 20 years here. Chantelle is convinced that she is unique. And while there is something to say for the differences in everyone's experience, there are commonalities that very much can be understood. And if the only defense you have for any of your thoughts are, oh, you just don't know, then maybe you should think harder without truly knowing what's going on in their mind and hearts. But I'm trying my best to explain. In the end, it all comes down to having to pick a place and sticking with it, and I truly, in the deepest crevices of my heart, oh, I don't want to think about foodie and her crevices. Want and need to be with my family in Kuwait and visit my family in Canada and not the other way around. Every three months. <laughs> I cannot make those who do not understand why I love the Middle East understand my reasons so i won't even try oh well, that's convenient <laughs> i think your problem isn't that we don't understand i think it's that we do but i do so all that being said i really 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 want to try harder than ever before to do more content over there more day in the life more cooking traveling shopping parks and more we've had this promise before we're not going to get it is is the simple answer to this She's tried to do the travel channel. She is not an engaging person. People don't want to watch it, really. But her day-to-day -day life doesn't include a lot of the things that people might be interested in watching in terms of the vlogging. Because she doesn't integrate herself into the culture. She doesn't get out there and do things. So we end up with not a lot of content. And then she gets mad about it. I want to travel to many countries. Every three months. Thailand was fun, and I want to live life to the fullest. Or maybe like two thirds to the fullest. I like <laughs> caveat. <laughs> doing things, and I also like laying like a seal in my cozy bed with my family and doing literally nothing for a while. Next time someone calls you a seal, don't complain when you brought up the comparison. Honestly, another way I can describe all this is moving back here to Canada. It just doesn't feel like me anymore or who I want to become. And don't get me wrong, Canada is a beautiful country and Canadians are amazing. As if that's the problem right now. Foodie falls back into the person she was every time she goes back to Canada because she's never really, and I know she throws the word addiction around a lot, but in her more addictive behaviors, she's never really become sober i suppose for want of a better word become clean because she didn't make the choice to not choose it she went somewhere where she couldn't get it 
And that's not the same behaviorally, I don't believe. She may be unable of getting what she wants in Kuwait, which is why we see her dive into food. But the moment she's got the choice, she chooses it. And it's not anything like that. It just feels like taking two steps back in life. Yeah. I've also been through a lot of bad stuff here. I've been through good stuff and bad stuff here. And that's why I am having some counseling while I'm here because to try to just come to terms with why. This is such bullshit. Because, okay, she said she was gonna have a counselor visit on the 18th, great. If she was setting up a long-term relationship, that would be fine. But going to a counselor is not like taking a pill or taking a batch of medicine. It's not, well, I went once and now it's done. If she's going back, and I'm gonna presume she's waiting for a payday here, which again is in a week, she won't go to the counselor until the 18th and it will just be an introductory session. So she's going to have what, at best, three days of counselling, assuming she goes back, which I doubt she will. What does she think it's going to achieve? She just wants to be able to say, no, I went to counselling. I went recently to counselling. You don't know anything. Like, no, you have no relationship with a counsellor. So you want to do long term therapy? You can do that online. You can have video calls. You can do it in that sense. But you can't for a second expect me to believe that she's going to maintain that. It would be completely opposite of the character we've seen so far. So baiting this idea of therapy and look how good I'm being and look, guys, pat my head. I'm doing what I should do. is just nonsense. And it's her attempting to pander a little bit to the audience because she's a little worried that she's put a foot in it again. Some of the bad feelings, you know, make me feel the way I do while I'm here. So anyway, I know my life is a roller coaster and most of you are dizzy, but I hate to tell you, and I'm so sorry, but we're going for another spin. She's so proud of the analogy and doesn't seem to realize that if you spin, you end up exactly where you were. Darling, I wouldn't be buying a ticket to the roller coaster if I wasn't ready for the ride. But that being said... Bearing in mind that she is going through all of these epiphanies and that she's just come out of hospital and she's, you know, very focused on treating herself right, then um, we've suddenly got an eating Italian poutine from Louis Pizza in my car. Oh, and apologizing for being a bee. That's in the title, which might be a bit confusing given the introductory scream we get. But let's get into that one. No, you can now request a prescription and get your cameo today. Can't wait to hear from you. So, bearing in mind that she is opening in the title that this is about apologizing for her attitude, she has started this with uh, the card warning. If you will complain, not if you will be offended, if you will dislike, if you will be disgusted by, if you will complain about eating noises give you hives, you have a misophonia, fat people should only eat salad, diabetes and carbs, you hate watching people eat, you may want to sit this one out. I thought the point of this was you apologizing for being a bitch, not making it worse. Well, hello guys. I have a special treat. That must be some of her Pennington's clothes. For myself and for you. For myself and for you. Oh, this is for us, is it? Oh, After you've told all of us to get lost. I never thought I would eat this again. Probably shouldn't, but I mean, I know I shouldn't. Okay, so I don't think I can eat bad food anymore. My body can't tolerate it. We're here now, two days later. <laughs> oh my gosh. This enormous. is a Italian poutine. It's enormous, and you're probably going to get it all over your shirt. Where is your tray? Don't get mad at me, Italians, I know. Look, it's all around the edges. It's going to be all over her new shirt. There's nothing Italian about it. Considering she can't easily get clothes in Kuwait, like... But, or at least she won't go and get measured to get them tailored in Kuwait. That's quite freeze frame, sorry. Uh, maybe be more careful with the clothes you have. For sure. And yeah, I'm in the key. I'm pretty much living in the key. <laughs> right. I wonder if her family know how much she eats when she goes out for drives. Right. 
Bearing in mind she's been doing it's the other bits. so messy, oh my gosh. God, it is gonna go everywhere. It's, it's so large. She's so happy, but it looks like such a mess. I, I like pasta. I don't eat it very often because it sits a bit funny with me, but I like pasta well enough. I understand a tomato sauce with a melted cheese on top, yeah? I'm not gonna sit here and pretend it's not delicious. That looks alarming. <laughs> Yum. So it's like fries, meat sauce, like spaghetti sauce, and mozzarella cheese. So the whole bottom of that is full of fries. That is a big old thing. Look how small the spoon, uh, the spoon, the fork is compared to the meal. And there's a rumor that this place gets their cheese from the mafia. <laughs> it's such a stupid rumor, but anyway. Look, she oh can't even get a fork the in fork there. The fork is bending. Yeah, that's a sign that you probably shouldn't consume that. She's just been in the ER for digestive issues. She's going to put that melted cheese in her face. Oh, boy. Meanwhile, the little bit of cream cheese on the brown bread that Lufthansa gave her. No, no, no. This is going to be too good. All right, brace yourselves for a sh <laughs> Brace yourself for an imminent heart attack. If I could ever get the... This is going to be messy. Sorry if you don't like messiness, but okay. Any bismillah? Or are you just not going to do it because you've got no idea if that's halal or not? Oh no. Mm. Look at how the cheese is hanging there. Like she's gone to hook the rest of it. I don't know if you're with me on this, but I feel like she's taking some steps back into trying to make feeder content without trying to make it too obvious so when she sits really close up like this and she's got a messy mouth it's not the way people usually eat now she used to be a lot more overt with this she used to put stuff in her mouth and then just let it fall and um just you know show it to the camera but i feel like she's getting in really close and she's just showing like a messy mouth thinking she can kind of take a step back to it while pretending it's a mistake and maybe it will sell better I don't know, but I don't think even as foodie you eat like that without meaning to eat like that. Look, that that right there. Yes, because when it happens, you just break it and then you catch it because it's an accident. She means for it to be there. What is this? Oh, complete surprise, I didn't feel it. Even my tray wouldn't be able to hold this. God, that's a sign! I don't know where my tray is. Oh, shoot, guys. So, this is from Louie's Pizzeria, which is like a... I thought she had spaghetti in there then. Nope, just, just cheese balls. Classic. I'm just like an icon around here. <clears throat> Look, just leaving it there. It's owned by the friendliest little Greek man. I haven't had a grape soda in a long time. She said that guilty because she knew exactly how bad it was for her to be having a grape soda. She's like, oh, it hasn't been for a long time. Look, it's just a treat. And I think her talk about it being nostalgic. I don't even know if I believe the story she told us um, in terms of, because of course she told a story and I'm going to skip it because it's not worth it. But basically... The girl whose family owned this place was in her elementary school and they were like best friends for a week. And it sounds like she was really jealous because her friend was living the dream of, um, oh, she could call and get this food anytime she wanted. And because they were best friends, Chantelle could too, because obviously Chantelle is special. So I am going to skip the bulk of that story when it comes. But I think she's selling the nostalgia angle of it just as an excuse to eat it. So she's like, oh, yeah, no, look, it's connected to this memory, which is why it's important to me, which is why I want to eat it now. Not just, hey, I've just been in hospital and my sugars were out of control and I had a horrible stomach virus. So I'm eating a pound of cheese on some fried potato and drinking a full sugar grape soda. I know, I know. You know, you know, but you're still doing it. You know how the body has a natural ability to forget pain? Foodie embraces that because even two days later, she's like, yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, she's about to go into the elementary school um, story, so I'm just going to skip it. Oh, 
course she would lift that. Mm. Not wipe it. Not with the napkin she has. It's honestly the best. It really is. Aren't a lot of meat sauces a combination of pork and beef? Just, just a thought. There's not many halal restaurants. Maybe t- uh, a couple. There's like. She's not thinking about halal restaurants at all. If she cared at all, she could go for vegetarian food. And as the woman who pretended to be vegan for a long time, it's not like she doesn't like vegetarian food. She doesn't want to. And that's the important thing to her. If it's slightly uncomfortable, she won't do it. So, you know, this is a great lifestyle choice for her. Shawarma places. And there's one halal restaurant I want to try, but it's closed for eat until like the 18th. Mmm. I have my counseling on the 18th. Yeah, the one-shot counseling that will fix all of her problems. I swear to God, she will sell it like that. Like they can't even diagnose her in one in one counseling session. But there we are. I'm actually looking forward to talking to someone about my feelings about what's going on with everything. You know, there's been so much that's happened in my life since the last time I ever had therapy, which I think was like a while ago. It was years ago and she didn't have therapy. She went to a session and then didn't show up to the follow-ups. And yeah, I do hate it because I don't like talking about these things really. How's not talking about them going as you dig into this family-sized poutine? But I'm gonna do it. We'll see on the 18th. I could actually believe, if just to try and shut us up, that she would go to a session um, just to say she went. And with the safety of knowing she's going to leave again, she wouldn't feel obligated to follow it up. Like, oh, no, we couldn't set up something internationally. Oh, no, la, la, la. Or she could just be going to the doctor for a completely different reason because she needs something signed off. Maybe she needs it to get her... Um, her depression meds updated because she's probably going to be taking three months of those but she did say she could get those over the counter in kuwait so who knows at this point probably be cheaper in canada oh won't, won't be able to eat all this i can tell you how about eating none of it it's not designed for one person to eat <laughs> definitely we'll have leftovers yeah keep telling yourself so i'm not sure when her I'm... sleeve is just going straight in it leaving She's going to leave after payday, I would imagine, unless there's anything else she can get out of the system before she goes. I'm not even sure what I'm doing. With my life, but I'm just taking it day by day for now. I wonder if she's saying taking it day by day because she hasn't had it confirmed that she can return to Kuwait yet. Because she would have to apply for the tourist visa again. Um, I believe it's an online application and you, I remember when I looked at it, you did have to tick if you've been there before or had one before. She probably will end up going back, but maybe she's just setting herself up with a bit of breathing room if she ends up not earning as much money as she thought. If the tax people, if the HRR tax people end up saying she has to pay something, like there's lots of reasons her money might need to go elsewhere and she probably doesn't have that much coming in right now. I'm getting very worried about the situation in the Middle East, honestly. I know I don't typically talk about politics on my channel, but like... Uh, you very much do. You parrot anything you hear from Salah or TikTok, but you, you do, yes. I'm legit worried about like... Like, I... There's like, Iran has now struck Israel, and it's like... There's definitely... Oh, that was a terrible freeze frame, I'm so sorry. There's definitely a lot of potential for retaliation. I do believe that the airspaces are now reopened because for a while with the airspaces being closed, like Saturday, Sunday time, I don't know on your time zone, um, she would have found it very difficult to get back into Kuwait uh, by air. Some of those areas have now opened and we'll just have to see what happens in terms of retaliation. Are there embassy being bombed or, you know, I just, I think that's what happened. I think because she doesn't process information well as well. I'm just sorry, I'm having trouble with the tapper. Because she doesn't process information very well and she gets bored really easily when she doesn't understand things, there are definite concerns, but I think she, you know how she likes to scare herself? I think there's a part in her brain 
that recognizes that going back to Kuwait is a terrible deal for her. And that as much as he's saying, no, 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 I'm going to do it right this time, they cannot afford to have her going back and forth between Kuwait and Canada this much. She could do local hopper visits, but um, within like the GCC, if the situation doesn't escalate, but going all the way to Canada is expensive and is tough on her. So because she is impulsive and because there are parts of her that don't know which one's going to be best, the fear that she's developing is really to see, okay, well, can I stay in Canada? But then when she looks at all the practical things she has to do in Canada, she gets overwhelmed and just wants to go back to Kuwait where it's easier. Things are getting bad over there. You know, and I just worry, obviously. I just want to say like a genuine, I'm sorry for like, if I was ever mean to you. Hi. So I just want to say I'm sorry and it'll never happen again and, and yeah. This is pure terror at her income. Do not believe it. She will go down screaming that she wasn't scamming the people that sent her money for her stuff in Canada because she only collected about $37. So it wasn't a scam because she didn't get enough money from it, which is obviously not true. If you collect money under false pretenses, it is a scam. So don't sit there and give me an apology that you will take back in two, three days whenever you are angry enough. Don't give this apology like it's going to be sincere and going to affect a change in your life. It never will. Because I've lashed out at viewers. I've been pretty nasty. And she will do I've it again. I've said some mean things. Even if it's out of anger, self-defense, whatever. Anger and self-defense are the same in her mind. You know, I really don't like being that way and hurting other people, so but will never take the steps to change it. If I hurt you, if I'm responsible for that or offending you, I apologize, like truly I do. What I tend to say to my students when we have behavioral problems that come back more than once is, hey, I appreciate the apology, but I would appreciate more a change in actions because then you don't have to say you're sorry because you're showing me you're sorry because you're not doing the thing that you need to apologize for. That for me is quite a basic thing. And if they need help with tools or with steps to ensure they're not doing that again, we can help them to implement that. Foodies never made that connection. If you're sorry, stop doing it. That is how you show it. If you're gonna keep doing it, get out of here with your apology, I don't care. And that just includes everybody. And I'm sorry, you know, for things I've said recently or during Cuba rage, I'm sorry, don't leave me, I need you here beside me. I hated my existence me. back then, you know, but it's no excuse. I have to be careful about how I treat people, how, how I... And isn't that just a little piece of the unintentional truth right there? I have to be careful, not with how she treats people, but with how she could lose her income through treating people that way. It's not about feeling bad for people, it's about being careful with herself. Talk to people, you know? That's the only thing I can control. Losing my channel for a week, like getting a strike for my behavior towards another person was eye-opening for me because I was like, but I was responding to somebody hating on me and it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter, that sounds so juvenile. Like, I do need to grow up in that way. I need to ex- Yeah, she does. If she wants to keep making money this way, yes, she does. If you're going to present yourself for public consumption, don't be mad about it. That, that. I can't stop. I'm on the internet. I can't stop people from hating on me. No, not everyone's going to like me, you know? And people are going to call me names or whatever and just point, you know, point things out about me, whatever. They're going to criticize me. And, you know, I look like crap going back and, and you know, raging against something that I don't like and doing the same thing. She said before it makes her feel dumb, but she keeps doing it. You know, calling someone names or whatever. So it was, it was eye-opening for me, honestly, about my own behavior. And Before she had a chance to calm down and say, no, 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 I deserved it. She must have been shitting herself. And not in the general sense of, oh, she's sick and she does it anyway, but like emotionally. I don't like myself that way. Look, YouTube, I've repented. <sighs> Look, Beezers, I've repented. Don't be mad. So, I have spaghetti sauce mouth like the kids in first grade. I had a birthday celebration in private with Salah. I think I was on a strike anyways. 
and we went to my favorite restaurant and um, he got me like a bunch of like Arabic desserts and he paid for my gla my new glasses. Oh, I thought she meant they'd celebrated at home, but wasn't she there when she picked her glasses? I thought they'd done it when, when she bought the hijabs. I thought that trip was one and the same. I might be getting confused. Also paid for most of the trip here, so. See, now that to me is a bit interesting because paid for most of the trip. If you're gonna pay for most of the trip, that doesn't necessarily make sense because either you would go to somebody and say, okay, I'll, tell you what, I'll give you half. That's a really common thing. Or you just pay for the trip. So paying for most of it tells me that neither of them separately had the amount of money you would need for the ticket. And so he put in as much as he could and she'd topped it up as much as she could. And then look at that. The idea of PayPal came up thinking she could grab some extra quick money. I'm not saying they don't do all right enough to be able to sustain themselves in Kuwait. I'm saying that they don't have the kind of money you would need to keep up with her change of mind. And then I got from my family, we had some celebrations with different family members because I kind of just bounce around when I'm here. <laughs> so the family members we know are sister, and I can't imagine her staying with them, uh, mum and stepdad and auntie. So is she just couch surfing on, figuratively, literally, between them because no one wants to keep her full time? Interesting. And I got a bunch of clothes. I'll have to show you guys everything. Some really cute things. And I'll do a separate vlog about my birthday. Add it to your to-do list. Well, I'll try to. I'll show you guys what I got and stuff. I will do some live streams, just maybe like uh, tomorrow or something. There hasn't been one yet, but I can always check after I finish recording. I just have been really sick. I can't believe that, but now I'm better, obviously, from eating Putin. <laughs> yeah, but not for long if you're eating Putin. When I was sick, I swore, I'm like, I'm never eating another bad thing for me ever again. Well, that seems to have lasted a long time. Anyway, I'm not going to eat the rest of this. I'm going to... You have eaten the majority of that. Pack it up and... Uh, eat it later. You know... I'm st later being when the camera's off. <laughs> still eating like some crap stuff and you know, I'm going to try to wean off of it, but, and eat less of it, but uh, it's hard. Like I said, it's like mixed in with nostalgia. It's weird. And that's really her excuse for everything. Do you remember when she was going to uh, do a series after she said she wanted to get healthy, do a series on all of the bad food that she eats and why she eats it. And I was like, you do that anyway. Anytime you have a mukbang that you can tell a story from 30 years ago, you do it. And it is 30 years ago now. It's elementary school. But I think that's mostly everything she said in here. Let me just double check. I'm going to leave it there. She's just talking about Tammy Slayton and how Tammy Slayton lost weight after the surgery because she just ate less of the things she likes, which Foodie thinks she has the control to do without the surgery and without the intervention of being in a clinic where people give you the food and you don't control it. I'm sure Foodie will pack her to-do list with things to entertain us and I will see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.